I am making a heraldic beast deck profile since I finally managed to get every or most of the stuff I was needing for it. Heraldic Beast is one of those decks that I've honestly just really liked, but they've been lacking in more or less support that makes them more playable. But overall, as far as I can tell, the Heraldic Beast deck is meant to be a kind of anti Xyz deck, so it might be a random deck played while Xyz monsters are popular. Or Xyz based decks are popular, I should say. But overall, it's still. I honestly like it, and I put one together just for fun. My friends don't like it. But. I figure for now I'll make the video for the for fun build, and then I'll make one later once I've gotten more accustomed to the deck. To then make a more competitive version. I use air quotes there. But anyway. This is a 40 card deck. Which. The original version I had built was like 50-ish cards, but I took decided I take about 10 cards out. But starting off with the monsters, I play three copies of Heraldic Beast Basilisk. Heraldic Beast Basilisk has the effect that whenever it battles a monster, at, after damage calculation, that monster is destroyed. Then I play two copies of Heraldic Beast Burner's Falcon. I'm only playing two Burner's Falcon because... Well, I just wanted the names, but Burner's Falcon doesn't really do anything in this version of the deck, just because it makes it so all monsters you control become level 4, that are level 5 or higher. Which, honestly, that effect never really has come up at all whenever I play Heraldic Beast, unless it's in a tag duel, where all my partner's monsters are level 5 or higher become level 4, and then I can just use their monsters to XZ summon. Anyway, next I play three copies of Heraldic Beast Ale. Heraldic Beast Ale is a free summon as long as you control two or more Heraldic Beast monsters. And then I play three copies of Heraldic Beast Unicorn. Heraldic Beast Unicorn is a hard ones per turn where you can banish it from your graveyard to target a Psychic Xyz monster in your graveyard and special summon it. However, its effects are negated. That's the only part of the Heraldic Beast Unicorn I don't like, is that it negates the summoned monster's effects. However, depending on what monster you bring back, it can just be, it, there would be a really big sh uh, body. Next, I play three copies of Heraldic Beast Twin-Headed Eagle. Twin-Headed Eagle has the effect that, while it's in the graveyard, you can banish it from your graveyard, target a face-up Xyz monster with no materials, and, as well as two Heraldic Beast monsters... Let's see, is this in your graveyard? Okay. You target an Xyz monster to Heraldic Beasts in your grave, so that you can take the two in your graveyard and attach them to an Xyz monster with no materials. And you can only use that effect of Heraldic Beast Twin Headed Eagle once per turn. Which, I've actually used that effect of Twin Headed Eagle on Baguska, which my opponent just hated. But also kind of funny. Then I play three copies of Heraldic Beast Am Amphisbana. Heraldic Beast Amphisbana has the effect that you can special summon it by discarding another one other Heraldic Beast monster. And then once per turn you can discard a Heraldic Beast monster so that it gains 800 attack points. Which really the only reason you would use the increased attack effect of Amphisbana is just so you can fill your grave with Heraldic Beasts as there is a funny spell card that uses Heraldic Beasts in the graveyard. And that was the only other thing I think of. Okay, but the other thing is if you have two Amphisbana and two Heralds Beasts in hand, you can just discard the two, summon the two Amphisbana, and you haven't even normal summoned yet. And then I play three copies of Heralds Beast Aberconway. Aberconway has the effect that if it's in a graveyard, you can banish another Heralds Beast Aberconway in your graveyard. So then target a Heralds Beast monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. So usually what, one thing I like doing with this is if I have two Abercornways in Grave, I'll banish one, target Heraldic Beast Leo, which I'll go over next, and then return it to the hand, which I also play three copies of Heraldic Beast Leo. Heraldic Beast Leo has the effect of during the end phase of the turn this card was normal summoned, 
destroy the card, and then when this card is sent to the graveyard, you get to add a Heraldic Beast monster from your deck to your hand, except for Heraldic Beast Leo. And you can only use that effect of Heraldic Beast Leo once per turn. The fun part is, since it says sent to the graveyard, that would include if it's detached as material. Which I just think is hilarious. So, basically, this is more or less just the main searcher of the deck, as you could, if you wanted, you could also take out this next card for a copy of Foolish Burial, just to have more search power. So I, I play, for the spells, I play one copy of Called by the Grave, just deal with hand traps or monsters in the graveyard I don't like. Then I play two copies of Charged Up Heraldry. Charged Up Heraldry lets you tribute one monster. Then special on two Heraldic Beast monsters from your deck in defense. The, however, their effects are negated, and you cannot summon from the extra this turn except for Xyz monsters. Or, or are you the one with the weird con restriction effect? Let's see. Okay. okay, you cannot summon from your extra deck for the rest of the turn except for Psychic and Xyz, or Psychic or Machine monsters. Which, that's the only weird part of this deck, is that for some reason their newer support locks you into Psychic and Machine. Might be the Konami's way of saying, hey, play Heraldic Beasts with Time Thief. Which, that is a version I'm working on, I just need to get a couple more cards. Next, I play three copies of Advanced Heraldry Art. Advanced Heraldry Art lets you target two Heraldic Beasts in your graveyard, summon them. And then immediately after this effect resolves, you XE summon using only those two monsters. The main thing I like about this card is that it's not once per turn. So if my graveyard is just full of Herald Beasts, then I can just use them with this card to XE summon. Speaking of XE summon, I play two copies of Overlay Network. Overlay Network has two effects where you can use, only activate one of per turn, where you can either target a one face that monster you control, special summon a monster from your hand that's the same level. And then you, however you can't summon from the extra deck except for Xyz monsters. Or you can target Xyz monster you control to add one card attached to it to the hand. I don't know if that means something like a Time Thief Redoer. If it has an opponent's card, if you can return it to their hand or if it gets added to your hand. That's the only thing I don't know about that. Which if you happen to know, please comment down Please comment about that because I'd really like to know. Next, I play three copies of Augmented Heraldry. Augmented Heraldry makes so that your psychic Xyz monsters cannot be targeted, but or let's see, yeah, cannot be targeted by spells or traps. And then once per turn, you can discard a Heraldic Beast to add a Heraldry spell or trap in your deck to your hand, except for another Augmented Heraldry, and then. If you use this effect, you cannot normal or special summon monsters this turn. The yeah, actually the effect, but I'm butchering this. If you use this effect, you cannot summon unless it's a psychic or machine. That's the or machine. You cannot summon unless it's a psychic Xyz or a heraldic beast. Which the psychic part kind of makes sense because most of the heraldic beast extra deck monster or most all of them are psychics. And then finally for the main deck, just because I honestly really like the card, there's Queen, I'm sorry, is three copies of all or three copies of Rank Up Magic Variance Force. This just lets you target an Xyz monster you control to summon a Chaos number or a Chaos Xyz that's one rank higher with the same type. Which this card's purpose will become clear when with the extra deck towards the end. Next, I play three copies of Numbers Overlay Boost. This lets you target a number Xyz monster you control that has no materials. Take two monsters and then attach two monsters from your hand to it as material. Which this is another card that I think is funny as I can, between this and 20 Handed Eagle, Baguska just does not die on its own. And I think it's hilarious. But that is it for the main deck. Like I said, it's a 40 card main deck, and it's honestly still in development as one thing I want to do is replace the copies of Numbers Overlay Boost with Number Wall, but I want to see how Numbers Overlay Boost does first. 
And then for the extra deck, I play one copy and number 60, Dugar's the Timeless. Dugar's just lets you detach two materials and then activate one of its three effects, where you can draw two cards and discard one, but skip your next draw phase. Double the attack of a monster you control, but skip your next battle phase. Or summon a monster from either graveyard to your field, but skip your next main phase one. And you can only use that effect of Dugar's the Timeless once per turn. Then I play one Abyss Dweller since uh, Tier Element is running around a lot more. One copy at number 41, Baguska, the Terribly Tired Tapir. Like I said, this card is a major annoyance in this deck as I'm able to just keep giving it materials and just does not die. As there are six cards in my deck that give it two more materials. So, the longest it can be in play is... I forget how... When it detaches, let's see what the fingers name is. Okay, so at the longest, Baguska can stay in play for 14 of my turns. Or 14 of my standby phase, I should say. And Baguska's effect is during your standby phase, you detach, detach material from it or destroy it. Or, my bad, you detach material from it. And if you cannot, then it self-destructs. And then while it's in defense mode, it switches every other monster on the field to defense, and then their effects are negated. Or if it's in attack mode, then... Let's see what's going to face up. I can't remember what its attack position effect is. Let's see... Okay, while it's in attack mode, it can't be destroyed by opponent's card effects. But while it's in defense, which is every other monster in attack mode to defense, and then negates their effects. The only downside of this is that it does not affect links, since link monsters cannot be put in defense mode. Then next, I play two copies, a number 18, Heraldry Patriarch. Heraldry Patriarch has the effect that once per chain, during a player's turn, if two or more monsters with the same name are on the field, you can detach material from it, to then destroy all other monsters where that you choose one monster among those with the same name and destroy all other monsters with that name. So it's mainly just used for I don't know. But the main reason you play this card is for its grave effect, which is I honestly forget. <laughs> While well, the card remains on the field, your opponent cannot specialize on monsters with the same name as any of the monsters choose for this card's effect. Then if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can send two Hurl the Peace monsters from your deck to the graveyard. Again, this is just here so that you can use Hurl the Peace Leo as if this dies, you send Leo and Twin Headed Eagle. Then you also play one copy at number eight, Heraldic King Genome Heritage. Genome Heritage just has the effect that once per turn you can target one XE's monster your opponent controls. Ch negate its effects and reduce attack and defense to zero, and if you do, this card is has its name changed to that card, its effect changed to that card's effect, and its attack and defense changed to match that card's original attack and defense. Basically what this does is it turns your, one of your opponent's XZ's gives it essentially becomes the XZ's monster you target while leaving your opponent with a zero attack token. Or a zero attack and defense token, more or less. That's the best thing I, way I can think of to summarize it. Then I also play one copy of Time Thief Redoer. This just has the effect that during e during the standby phase, quick effect, you can act this card's effect to attach the top card of your opponent's deck to as material. And then you can activate its effect depending on what materials it has, which if I remember, which I don't. Or you can detach materials up to three different types to activate its effects depending on what was detached. Or if you detach a monster, you banish it till the end phase. A spell, you get to draw a card. Or a trap, you get to place one face up card your opponent controls to the top of the deck. And you can only use this effect to time thief redoer once per turn. The, the annoying thing with redoer is the fact that if you have multiples, you can just keep taking the top card of your opponent's deck. Because the only hard ones per turn of redoer is the effect to detach material. Then next, for a, quote, power card, I play one copy of Dark Rebellion XZ's Dragon. 
Dark Rebellion has the effect that you can detach two materials from it to then target one monster your opponent controls, take half its attack points. But the fun part of this card in this deck is the fact that I can use cards like Twin Headed Eagle to give it two more materials. And then, because it has two more materials again, it can use this effect again. Because Dark Rebellion Exceeds Dragon, for some reason, does not stay once per turn anywhere. Then, I play three copies of the funny number, which is number 69, Heraldry Crest. Honestly, when I was playing this deck together, it was back when... Uh... What was it? Back when Kishtira still had three copies of Arise Heart. As I would use Heraldry Crest to kind of force out the Arise Heart's effect to banish a card. But Heraldry Crest has the effect that when when it's special summoned, it negates the effects of every other is it just every other It negates the effects of every other face up XZ's monster on the field. And then it also has the effect that once per turn you can target one XZ's monster on the field, replace this card this effect with that monster's effect and then you can only use that of each that effect of number 69 heraldry crest once per turn so one thing I actually did with this deck was when a rise heart was still a legal card to play was I actually summoned heraldry crest my opponent said that's fine not realizing what was going to happen and then a rise heart had its effects negated then I used heraldry crest's effect to take rise hearts of a rise hearts effect and then remove the rise heart from play which I just thought it was hilarious And then, I apologize, I was reading a card off screen. I play three copies of Chaos, number 69, Heraldry Crest of Horror. Heraldry Crest of Horror has the effect that when a opponent's monster clears an attack, you can destroy all their, or all cards your opponent controls. And then if it has Heraldry Crest as the material, then it gets the following effect, where you, you can target one XZ's monster, or you can detach material from this card, to then target one face-up XZ's monster your opponent controls. And then Heraldry Crest gets the gain attack from that monster's original attack. It, its name becomes that card's name, and it gains that monster's effect. The main reason this card's in here is because of the whole when the opponent attacks, their entire board is blown up. Also, the fact it's a 4,000 body. And then finally, for the deck's quote boss monsters, I play one copy of Divine Arsenal Double A Zeus Sky Thunder because it's an XZ's based deck that locks you into Psychic and Machine. I feel like Zeus is more or less meant to be played in this deck. As Zeus itself is a Machine XZ's monster. But Zeus has the effect that you can XZ summon it by using one XZ's monster you, you control that has attacked. And then, not even once per chain, you can just detach two materials from it to then send, you, after its effect, to send all cards on the field or all other cards on the field to the graveyard. Which means if it has six materials, you can use that effect thrice per chain. Which I think is dumb. But anyway, that was it for my Herald Beast deck profile. If you have any ideas what I can do to improve the deck, any ideas of decks like to be made in the future, or decks like to see you face each other, feel free to comment down below. Thank you so much for watching.